What is up, peeps? This is for the Win TCG, and I'd like to welcome you back to another YouTube video. And of course, we have some more Team PTCG online today, and we're going into a fresh deck. We are playing with Kangaskhan. This card is um, nothing too crazy. There's always better alternatives out there. You, you, you know, you're probably better off using a Shining Lugia rather than this Kangaskhan. But the whole point is to just test out these kind of crazy ideas and just see what we can do. Um, so we are going to be playing Kangaskhan with Malamar, obviously trying to use the main attack, which is, I think it's called Hurricane Punch. I didn't, I didn't read it just there. I don't really pay attention to names, to be honest. Um, but I believe it's called Hurricane Punch, where it does 50 damage if you flip, coin, flip four coins, yada yada. Then you can go ahead and use that attack, uh, which is pretty cool because you can potentially hit 200 damage, although you're not always going to do that. And um, we are putting in Victini, of course, to really increase the odds of us hitting bigger numbers or hitting more desirable numbers. Um, and a lot of the time, what you tend to realize happens here is um, you tend to have this weird... Sometimes you have these weird plays where you're doing... Like you say, you, fl you need to hit 200 damage and you flip three instead of four. And you're sitting there going... Do I reflip? Because hitting 150 is better than hitting zero, right? Because if you reflip and hit zero, then you're better off with the first option. So it's kind of um, it's, it's kind of like a gamble a lot playing this deck. So I wouldn't say this deck is anything fantastic, but it's exciting because you're sitting there going, okay, do I, you know, go with the damage I have, or do I risk it for a, for more damage? It's quite a risky risky maneuver. Um, so I mean that's why I'm not really a fan of like flip said coins. For each heads do damage because if you play Victini, you get the option to uh, flip again, which could actually end up being worse off. Uh, nonetheless, it looks like we're playing against Toxapex GX, I'm assuming, or unless they're playing some weird Toxapex deck. Um, I don't know how I feel about Toxapex, and we are again starting to see just us come up against some decks that are just not top tier stuff. Um, and again, I know this is something I'm trying to figure out. Maybe instead of jumping straight into Versus, maybe I can do a tournament with a deck. Um, that could be an idea. Um, although that would be very a very long video, if I'm going to be honest. So I'm not too sure how I feel about going into tournaments. But um, it, again, it's quite hard to really increase. Or maybe I'll do my testing in tournaments. Because I'm, I'm I never have an issue really with getting the tickets. Because I play a lot anyway. So maybe what I could do is go into tournaments to test the decks. If it wins a tournament, then it's probably something worth up, worth uploading. Um, rather than testing in versus, it's a bit tough. I could test against some of you guys. I know there are some of you that actually do want to play me. So I am about, I'd love to test against you guys as well, against some top tier decks. If that's something you're interested in, by all means, it would always be helpful. Um, this is kind of cool. We just go straight into a Kangaskhan with two DCEs, but... Uh, we have no Zeb Striker to really get out of this situation. I mean, what would be the really smart option is to bench this other Kangaskhan and then just put the DCE on there. So that way we have two options here. It might be a bit greedy to go for the... Yeah, let's do that. So at least we have some sort of options here. I don't think we're going to need the Choice Band, but I could be wrong. I'm not too sure. Let's just got the Choice Band and let's get a Malamar into play. It just thins our deck a little bit. Hopefully, we can top deck a draw supporter. We play a healthy amount. I think we play like eight draw supporters, which is pretty pretty decent. That's like kind of the number you want to achieve um, in a deck that has some additional draw support from your bench. So, I think we're just in a tough dead draw spot. So, yeah, I'm guessing Toxapex Naganado, which looks a bit weird in my opinion. Um, okay, so, yeah, we definitely... I did not see that coming. Um, I did not think they could do that with just two cards in their hands. So, now we're kind of in a troublesome spot because uh well i mean we do actually hit uh 60 damage with cross cut because it does 30 more damage if they're in evolution so we have that option at the very least um what i could do is mysterious treasure this away and get another in k down let's do that and we'll use the malamar to accelerate to the bench kangasan and then we'll just go for a cross cut um so i guess i kind of misplayed by being a bit too um a bit too conservative in my approach there. Uh, rather focusing on having two Kangaskhan set up than all energy on one. So maybe that was just a misjudgment in my part. Um, however, I thought that was a safer option to do just in case they find a way to one hit KO the Kangaskhan, which, well, looking at it now, it's not really going to happen. Um, so if we get Kukui, that'd be like excellent. No, we don't. Um, we do play Kukui, by the way, just to help some hits and numbers, but we didn't get it there, which is a shame. Okay, I'm actually going to... Yeah, we turn to Kukui in our hand, and that can be extremely relevant. So I'm going to discard these Psychics here, which I'm kind of comfortable with. And I'm going to get a Zeb Striker. That's for... Um, 
yeah, I'm not going to use it yet because this Kukui could be quite helpful. We're going to attach DCE to the active Kangaskhan and use that Psychic Recharge to the bench one. So we have two Kangaskhans ready to go. And uh, awesome thing is as well, is they have this stadium in play. Oh, the Kangaskhan only has one retreat cost now, which is great. Let's go for the Hurricane Punch, see what we get. Come on, don't, don't do this. Oh, okay, that's not doing it. So we're going to flip again. Come on. Where's my luck? Where's my luck? There's my luck. Okay, that's enough. Good stuff, good stuff. Was it um, Giraffe Net Mark? I think it was you that managed to calculate exactly. I'm just looking on YouTube now. Let me just mute my YouTube quickly so I don't uh, interrupt. Well, it's not letting me do it, I'm afraid. Um, wasn't it he that said it's like I had like a, a one point something percent chance of me hitting all those tails in one of my videos? Which video was it? Um, it was this one, wasn't it? I'm going to just check quickly. Yes, so it was in my latest, I, I'll leave a link up there on, on the right-hand side, top right-hand side of the screen now. Um, in my latest Packer Match video, I had to do a coin flip to actually hit uh, damage. I think I had to flip six coins. Um, and yeah, drafting in my calculator, I had a 1.5% chance of hitting six tails in a row. And that's exactly what I did. And I was like, well, that's my luck. So I don't really like <laughs> coin flips because it never works for me. <laughs> Um, anyway, let's throw this escape ball down. This Kukui could really help with our damage, so I'm comfortable playing that. We can get another Kangaskhan down and just get that ready, which is so cool. You just drop a Kangaskhan, throw a DCE, as long as you've got two Malamar in play and two Psychics in the discard pile, which we don't. Um, if we get two Psychics, we just have a Kangaskhan ready to go, which means you can just keep, again, flowing with these attacks. And we have Zeb Striker in again here, just going for a sprint. Extra draw, always important and great. And uh, we're just going to go in with a Hurricane Punch. And if we hit the 200 damage, we win. So, fingers crossed. Heads? 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 Oh, no. See, this is exactly what I was about to say. Do we do it? Do we flip again? I think we should. I think we should. This is such a bad idea. Oh. No, no. Don't. Oh, okay, I got punished. I got punished. I got punished. But I still hit 120. It's still a two shot. Um, oh, that would have been so fun. Oh, well. That's exactly my point that I made at the start of this video. It's kind of like, it's risky. We could have hit the big number. We could have hit 170. I mean, if a choice band uh, was around, then we would have been able to do it. And that's why I did want the choice band in there. Is because if we play a coup in a choice band and we flip three heads, we're hitting a 200 damage, which is quite good. Um, against obviously some basic GXs and it just helps hit some one shots, especially in the evolutions um, that are out currently. So it just helps hit those numbers. Uh, nonetheless, uh, we don't do 120. The reason why I wanted to flip again was because I just looked at their hand and their current board state. Like the odds of them getting what they want to KO this Kangaskhan is super unlikely. Like it is ridiculously unlikely. So. I think this is almost just an automatic win by their setup um, yet again. Wow, we're nest balling a Giratina. That's like un the least ideal thing to do. All right, so they're going to have to go for their spike cannon attack. Um, we're just going to have to grind through this game as of right now um, until, we just, <laughs> until we just effectively win, right? Quite arrogant to say that, but uh, I mean, their board state is uh, very weak. Uh, so we're going to throw Shrine out. I mean, that might have been the wrong thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. Um, what could we rescue Shred? We could throw the NK and the Kangaskhan back in the deck. Sure, we'll do that. I might have done that a bit preemptively, but I kind of want to go for a sprint here. Is that smart, though? No, it's not. I'm not going to sprint because holding this Victini in the hand is quite critical. Yeah? No, 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 no. We're flipping again for sure. We do not want to do a 50 damage. Haha, <sighs> okay, we did it. <laughs> Super close. I was going to say, if we had to do 50 damage again and again, oh, that would have been painful. That would have been real painful. Um, so yeah, any damage modification is always good in this type of stuff because let's say if you hit the 50, you want to get the most of it. So again, choice bands and kukuis is, is always pretty decent in this deck. And this deck doesn't take much to set up, to be fair. You, the only evolutions you need are for obviously Malamart and Zeb Striker. Or Zeb Streaker, however you want to pronounce it. Um, all the other stuff is just basic Pokemon. And they they utilize DCE very well. So it's like, well, yeah, there we go. Um, I mean, Choice Band's not relevant here. So I'm just going to go for a Cynthia. See what we pull out of this. I don't think we need anything right now. I mean, the Kukui could be good, definitely. 
Um, so let's go for the Hurricane Punch. Hopefully we hit three heads. <laughs> no, we don't. And we're definitely going to flip again. I do not want 50 damage. I want 150 damage. And we get it. Look at that. Look at that luck. Finally, I'm getting some coin flip luck. Good stuff. Good stuff. Now, I know, of course, I can bring the Giratina back and go for the spread damage. But ah, it's all right. It's all right. Um, pretty much, Kakuya would see us the game here if they don't get anything else out and they don't evolve because we just need one heads. Um, to be able to hit uh, the right amount of damage to knock out this NK. So, let's see what happens here. I'll probably roll another one after this because this is kind of a lackluster game. I mean, they're just not setting up. We're just walking through them right now. Um, so, I'd like to have a bit more of an entertaining game. Although, I am getting a bit tired. It is getting quite late. Um, and, of course, I, I now have a sleeping schedule because I take my son to school every morning. So, I go to bed at like 10, 11 o'clock now. And I've trained my body to, to be tired around that time. And right now it's 10 past 10. So I'm slowly falling asleep. <laughs> um, because of course I have to. To make sure that I have a good day. The following day. So yeah. I'm, I'll probably get into another one for sure. Um, but I probably have to drop my energy levels a little bit. Because I am getting quite tired. Um, right. They get Dawn Wings down. So what was it? Was this meant to be a Malamar deck, but they just played this in K instead? Which that's a bit weird. I think the Psychic in K is better because of hypnosis, plus the you don't want to be weak to fighting. No. Okay, so Kikui is quite relevant. So let's let's drop let's throw the Kikui. I'm gonna just go for an attack. I mean we don't need to sprint, that's just overkill. We just get one heads. There we go. I mean, yeah, let's 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 not play around here. We're gonna go straight in there, hitting 120. Good stuff. And as I said, we're just currently just walking through them. Not even needing to. I, I haven't seen a Guzma. I might have I put Guzma in this deck? Like that would be kind of stupid not to. I mean, I might have forgotten to put Guzma in this deck. That's quite funny. <laughs> if I'm gonna be honest. But I mean the deck is functioning. Let's just go. Let's just roll with it. If there's no Guzma in this deck, let's just roll with it. Oh, Sigalith. I haven't looked at you for a long time. This effects of our resistance. Examine times that energy attached to your opponent's active Pokemon. This Pokemon is attached by attacked by GX or EX, then put damage counters on it. Equal to it. Eh, kind of good. Not a big fan, if I'm going to be completely honest. Um oh, that's interesting. They're gonna drop a Nile Ego. Uh with that said, we can just manually retreat. So we can attach the psychic and manually retreat. That's what I'm going to do. We've got to make sure we get at least guarantee the attack, right? So, yeah, let's let's attach the psychic. I'm just going to manually retreat here into this Kangaskhan, which I'm comfortable with. And then we can just charge this one back up, which feels awesome. Um, so, let's get that back in here. I guess this functions very similarly to the Lugia GX deck um, as well. Uh, but this is just a non-GX deck that can utilize Shrine, but... Has a bit more risk to it. But uh, let's see if we pull off. I think we just need two, right? Two heads. We're hitting 130. Uh, Shrine can kind of take it over next turn. Should we... <laughs> see, we got the option again. Do we flip again? And try and go for the three heads for the, for the game? No. Yes, we're going to risk it. We're going to risk it. Why not? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, it's the same. <laughs> Look, I want to risk it every now and then. By every now and then, I mean every single time. <laughs> of course, man. we got to have some fun. Have some fun. That's the whole point, right? Uh, nonetheless, we did get the same damage. They end their turn, and that is game. So, yeah, I'll, I'll definitely get into another one. Um, because that was just a bit lackluster. I want something a bit more entertaining. Hopefully, considering we've started a win streak effectively, that we are more likely to come up against a, a good deck. Uh, looking at that typing, I don't know what I'm against. Oh, no. Are we against... Oh, we're against Garchomp. Oh, no. I mean, we can one-shot Garchomp, but we need three heads for that to be able to obtain that. Or, well, I was going to say, I was going to say, yeah, for a choice ban, but you can't use choice ban. So, we do need three heads to be able to KO Garchomp. Good thing is, is it's not hard for us to set up. Um, not at all. And they'll be trying very hard to just one-shot a non-GX Pokemon. So I'm kind of okay with that. I don't really want to leave that Kangaskhan in the active. I'd like, I usually prefer getting Inkay out first. 
or blitz was the most ideal one to get in the active because i will be primarily searching to attach a skateboard on there to give it the free retreat or a victini um but starting a in k in the active is okay starting a kangaskhan in the active is like the worst one um because you want to load it up on your bench and then attack okay it's a buzzwall so this is probably not a sh uh not a gx deck but um let's just roll with it and see where we go so i'm just going to attach that here and i'm just going to throw the shrine out i mean why not and leave it there so i want to get the blitzel out right away because as soon as we get a zev striker we can just get rolling and not have to worry too much about dead drawing um so zev striker definitely holds this deck together a lot more so yeah i really want to get it out asap now this is the tough thing uh this kang is going is weak to fighting so we're in a pretty bad spot unfortunately so uh, we just have to kind of roll and see where we go here. But again, I am assuming we're up against Garchomp. Um, considering they have nothing down, that's like a big plus um, for us. That's a, that's a big, big bonus. I don't know why I attached that. I'm just asking for a field blower, aren't I? Uh, let's get an NK down. I think that's kind of like what we have to do now. I mean, we're going to attach another one to this Kangaskhan in the hopes that they don't KO us next turn, which I, 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 I hope so. I don't think they would have a Diancie if this is the Dragon Guard Chomp, which is the one most people favor. I doubt there's a Diancie in this deck, so I'm assuming they're not going to KO us again next turn. So if we top, a DC, a top deck a DCE, we could actually KO this thing um, if we hit two heads. Um, so we could actually come out on top here. So fingers crossed. But they are like benching nothing. They're getting nothing down. Copycat. What? Hello? Are you for real? I mean, they get to get they get to bench something, right? But copycat when I have two cards in my hand? Oh, that feels bad, man. Okay, Victini, and this is pretty much the worst case scenario. Um, super rough, and they're gonna get a fully charged buzzball out as well. <laughs> Fingers crossed, they just dead drew themselves. Fingers crossed, please. Because we're just in dead draw town right now. I mean, I can get the Kangaskhan back thanks to the rescue stretcher. So that's good. At least we can go in for another attack. But, oh my. This is like the slowest gameplay I've ever seen. Super slow. Oh my god. We do have to go back in with the Kangaskhan. Oh. Oh, this feels just rough. This feels super, super rough. Okay, I guess we'll Psychic Reach. <laughs> this is stupid though. Because they're just going to KO it again. This is bad. I mean, if they KO this Kangaskhan, I'm going to scoop and get into another game because this is just super slow. I do not like this one bit. And they're just like, they're just manually drawing to a better hand. So there we go. They KO the Kangaskhan. Yeah, we're, we're scooping and we're just going to, we're going to go for another one. That is one of the worst setups I've seen this deck achieve and uh, I'm not proud of it. So let's get into another game and see if we can actually come up against a good deck and set up well. Um... Oh my god, that moustache. Okay, so I saw Fairy in fighting. Are we playing Buzzwall GX? Maybe? Because I know Buzzwall is all about Buzzwall and Ninetales now. Obviously, finding a Beast Rings is busted. I think Buzzwall's in a good spot. Um, I still like my Buzzwall, my Buzzwall Azumarill, though. <laughs> okay, yeah, starting as a striker. That's uh, starting a Blitzel, sorry. That's pretty good. We have the Ultra Ball in hand as well. So, we can definitely get our Zeb Strikers into play. Uh, our Zeb Striker into play to really fish for the stuff we need that's good but again we're up against fairy and fighting if we're up against fighting that's kind of a bad sign most of our deck is weak to fighting you can't let's have it malamar though i mean if the, if we're playing buzzworld then we just choice band and malamar we're actually hitting them for 180 so plus shrine we're actually one hit potentially one hit KOing a buzzworld with a malamar if we just get attack with it right which doesn't feel good but i mean you just got to do what you got to do um so let's just uh see uh, what we're actually up against first before i start discussing that okay oranguru is not really helpful <laughs> i don't know what i'm up against i know i wanted to ultra ball for the zeb striker but i'm gonna get rid of this choice band here and hold the escape board in case they feel blower and i just want to get a kangaskhan out and go for a lily um because i want to attach this dce and then thin my hand down as low as possible so we get a fresh hand of six this is just excellent just a ton of ball search which is great stuff. Um, and then we're going to Mysterious Treasure here for a psychic, Mysterious Treasure, a psychic way for another Inke. And then we could Ultra Ball, a Ultra Ball and Kukui next turn 
for a Zip Striker. Um, I think that's what I want to do. Um, I'm kind of scared of leaving Blitzel in the active position. Because I don't know what I'm up against. And I don't know their potential of getting a big KO on us. I really don't. Well, we're going to bank on it and just leave the Blitzel in the active for this first turn here. Um, and then we'll obviously retreat into the Kangaskhan. Because I really want to get... Um, yeah, we've got the Psychic. So I really just want to get some Malamars out. So maybe be the, the goal would be to get Malamars rather than a Zev Striker. But then Zev Striker can make it more likely for us to hit some Malamars. I don't know. We'll see. We will see. Because if they don't bench anything here, which, well... They are going to. I was going to say, they don't bench anything. We could actually get a win. Oh, no. Was it fire, not fighting? Is that... Uh, did I did I see completely wrong there? I must have completely misread things. Um, oh, no. We're up against Gramble, the deck I hate playing against so much. Oh, I hate playing against Gramble. Oh, it's so miserable. <laughs> but give credit where credit is due. Gramble is a fantastic deck, so... And it's it's piloted so, if it, if it's piloted so well, it just blows everything up. <laughs> um, well, it's very weak to anyway. Steel, so hmm. maybe maybe that's probably why the Registeel deck that actually went into a tournament against Gardevoir did pretty well because they were coming up against Grambles and Gardevoir. And Gardevoir's in a really good spot as well. I think Gardevoir's a bit underrated, <laughs> which is kind of weird to say because at one point I believe it was like the start of last year or something that. Was it start of last year? I could be wrong. Where Gardevoir was just the best deck ever. Everyone was like, Gardevoir's the best deck. Gardevoir's insane. Okay, Shrine of Punishment is so useless right now. So let's do that. Now, getting rid of this Oranguru is actually top priority. So I'm going to really go in here and hopefully get a Malamar off this, which we don't. That's really a feel-bad moment. But we do get to attack, actually. And we get to drop the Victini. That's good stuff. That is good stuff. We just found an alternative route to KO this Oranguru. And the great news as well is that uh, we only actually need to get two heads here because we played the Kukui. So if we get double heads, which we don't, um, we are definitely flipping again. Come on, just two heads. One. Huh? Yeah, good stuff, good stuff. KO on the Oranguru. Just make their life a little harder. Although, let's be real, they're probably going to get one out right away considering this deck plays a ton of ball search. Nest balls and great balls and ultra balls alike. Even mysterious treasures just for the sake of thinning. Um, yeah, I'm pretty confident they're going to get what they need out this turn. As long as they get them a cargo and an Oranguru down. They've got what they need and they are definitely off to the races. So I'm very aware that they could really get things going now that's my assumption the best thing when playing against gramble is when they like that their, their engine just like breaks for a moment you know they get a turn where they just can't do the 160 you're like yes i've got a turn to just either catch up or, or keep up so exactly what i said the oranguru is going to come back out they can do everything now they did a bit of a misplay there they used the macargo and then played a great ball so their deck actually shuffled itself which means what they could have done is actually use Macargo then and then got what they want. Like an energy and maybe an ultra... Well, you can't get two things. An energy and hopefully top deck and mysterious treasure. Or top deck and mysterious treasure and hopes you're going to get an energy. Or something down that line. But they might have put themselves in a position where they have a turn where they're not being able to attack. Just because they haven't found the energy. Or they haven't found the card they need to thin their hands down with the energy. And that might be because they played the Macargo first and then the Great Ball. So the big thing about Gramble is sequencing. Sequencing is like the biggest thing. You want to make sure every single time you're doing the right thing in that moment. So I'm assuming they're going to bring up the Malamar, which is like a smart way to play. Um, we just need pretty much an energy. Um, and I'm kind of confident we can obtain it here from this Lily. So we just get energy. Oh, oh feels bad. Feels absolutely terrible. Yikes, 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 indeed. Okay, that's fine. We're just gonna... It's kind of tough because this is like our turn to get rid of the Oranguru. Like, we needed to get rid of Oranguru this turn, but it's just not happening. Regardless, I'm kind of disappointed we did not find an energy there. I think finding an energy would have really, really just got us out there. And taking out the Oranguru would have been helpful. But they now have to find a switch and play the switch. Plus find an energy. So they have to find two cards with only one Oranguru, which means that... Odds are they're probably not attacking again. So, the best, again, the best thing to do now, I think, on their end, looking at their board state, 
is probably just get another Makargo and find another um, Oranguru. Because having two Oranguru and two Makargo is what makes the deck so good. You get you can get any two cards you want any turn, which is fantastic. So they're going to have Field Blower, uh, which is rough. And they're obviously going to get rid of those. So we need, now need to find a DCE um, to just get this thing out of the active, which feels really, really awful. Um, but I don't mind that because, again, we're at the stage where we've got two Malamars in play. You know, we're going to be accelerating energy anyway. So I think we're fine. But again, they need a switch and an energy. That's the two cards they need right now. If they don't have them, they don't attack. So let's see what they've actually got. I'm um, Fingers crossed they don't. So they have a poker now. So they can actually get an energy now. Uh, and they probably... Okay, so they're not. Okay, they get a Gramble. Um... I'm assuming they just did not find the energy off that Pokenav. Um, but again, yeah, I, I think this is just another turn where we kind of get to try and find a way to retreat here. Uh, this feels super rough. Like playing a Lily now draws us two cards. Uh, if we attach the Psychic, though, we can't retreat this turn. So we have to kind of play a ballsy play here and hope we top like a DCE. And we don't. So we're just going to attach to this Malamar. And then next turn, we will have to we will be able to retreat. And the great thing is, to be fair, is if I retreat this Malamar, I can just uh, actually retreat into this Kangaskhan and then accelerate the two energy I costed to retreat to this Kangaskhan. So we're still being able to keep our energy going without having too much of a sacrifice. So I am kind of comfortable with that. Again, they really need to use them a cargo and just get themselves something. But they, they need a switch or a Guzma, which they can obtain this turn. But again, they're at the stage where they need two cards. They need an energy plus a switch option. So that's like what they need. And having one Macargo in play, depending on what they have in their hand, it's going to be really hard to actually achieve that. So let's see if they do. Fingers crossed they don't, because again, we want to... Obviously beat this deck. So they've got the energy. Do they have the switch? Or the Guzma? Fingers crossed they don't. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, they got it. No. No. There's so many times we could have attacked, but they just stalled us. They got the stall. They got the stall. Um, oh. We have to promote the Kangaskhan, guys. We have to. We have to promote the Kangaskhan. And that just feels awful. Our hand is like super clunky. Oh, this is just disgusting. Okay, Kukui. Give me something. <laughs> no. Oh, no. This is so awful. Such a clunky hand. Like, we can't do anything. I mean, we attach an energy to this Kangaskhan. It's pretty much dead. Um... I guess we attach an energy to Malamar. We're going to be attacking with Malamar, I guess. All right, cross cut for 60. Um, oh, 80. We'll take Kukui, the doi. Um, oh, this is awful. Now, all they've got to do is just thin. Like, they've got the energy. All they've got to do is thin. That's it. Um, one thing I say, though, is Gramble's greatest enemy is definitely Mildex. <laughs> you know, it's like, buy energy. Okay. You have a terrible time trying to get them back. But, um, yeah. Now, this is where they just set up. They just keep going. I mean, all they need to do is probably just top deck an Ultra Ball and then just pay the Ultra Ball. Like, that's it. And then just get another Macargo. That's what I would do, depending on what's in my hand. So, maybe I should give Granville a try. Um, I just have a, such a vendetta against this card. <laughs> Every time I play Granville, I'm like, oh. <laughs> like, I have to outsmart it. And it's, like, so hard to do that. <laughs> I'm going to use my noggin. <laughs> I'm going to use my brain. All right, so I'm going to Apricot Maker. I would just grab an Ultra Ball or a Great Ball. No? I'm just going to go for that. That's fair. That's fairs. That's all fairs. All fairs. Ah, feels absolutely terrible. Indeed, it does. So they're off to the races. And uh, they've pretty much got the most desired setup. Now, the way to really beat Gramble is take out the Macargos. But um, we're just not doing it. Okay, so at least we get some Strikers. So there's some sort of hope here. Um, and I'm actually not even going... Well, I'm going to attach to this, I guess. I mean, we have two Malamars, two energy in the discard. Very accelerating anyway. So, yeah, we're going to be attacking with Malamar, which feels so awful. It just feels disgusting. All right. Um, let's rescue stretch these Kangaskhan into deck. And I guess we can just use the other, get the other Malamar down just in case. 
And we'll just get a Kangaskhan out. Oh, wait, no, we could attack the Kangaskhan. We can attack the Kangaskhan. Yeah, we can do that. Though it doesn't really feel good. Uh, oh, wait, no, we can't. I was thinking for some reason I can attach this DCE in my hand. No, you can't, Sean. Don't be stupid. Now, do I play the Cynthia, though? Because we have the DCE in hand. I mean, like, it would be a bit silly to get rid of it, right? I mean, our discard pile has two DCE now, right? Yeah, so it would be a bit silly to throw this away. So we're going to hold our hand here. I really want to keep that DCE. So we're just sitting here poking, uh, which just feels super rough. Um... Ugh, that dumbbells as well. It's just horrible, 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 horrible. Um, but that's that's uh, that's the whole point, right? We're going to try out decks, and sometimes it just clunks. And that's really the fun part of the deck making process, in my opinion, is when you see a flaw in a deck, you sit there and go, "Oh, okay, so it's done this. This is a bad thing." You know, it's it's let's say it's dead drawing, or you know, the good example here is that our draw supporters are primarily draw cards fresh from the deck um which can be problematic if we have haven't got much discard options which what well, we do because we play like a ton of mysterious treasure and ultrable um but if we don't have much thinning and discard options then maybe we need to think about uh, having a bit more shuffle draw so that we can guarantee at least some new cards if we have a big hand which you know sometimes can happen in this deck so we might need to reconsider the types of draw supporters we're playing as well um, and that, again, that's where it gets exciting because you're sitting there really analyzing that. Um, okay, so we need to get another Inkay down, like ASAP. Um, I don't... Well, thank you. I don't know why I've got two Victini. I, I, I must have just benched it without even using my brain. I must have just went plop and benched it. We're not using the Zeb Strike it yet, so... Um, okay, so next turn, we can pretty much have a Kangaskhan out if this one gets KO'd. But... Uh, We'd have to promote, like, the Victini or something. Hurricane Punch! Please don't do four heads. Okay. If I get four heads again... Four, sorry, if I get four... Did I just say please don't get four heads? I meant to say please don't get four tails. If I get four tails again... I don't know what I would do. <sighs> okay. Okay. That kind of scared me a little. I was like, no, no. What? Okay, what are actually the odds of hitting? Why are you smiling? What did I do? What are the odds of hitting um, uh, eight heads? Sorry, eight tails in a row. That'd be awesome. Since we know that hitting six is like 1.5%. <sighs> two Macargos. Do they also have another Ranguru? I can't see. Yep, they've got the ideal setup. They've got the two Macargos, the two Ranguru. <sniffs> Sorry, I know I'm sniffing a lot and stuff. I'm just, I've got something coming up, clearly. Uh, which is not fun. It's always it's always in the winter. You just get a ton of illnesses. <laughs> um, but yeah, they've got the ideal setup. I just don't see us winning. I don't. I mean, we yeah, we can't keep up really. Uh, why are they shocked? Please. What? Why are you shocked? What's the shock face for? I'm so confused. I'm so confused. I'm baffled. Uh, uh, these escape boards are like so crucial because we we have to kind of promote a Victini. Let that get KO'd and... Oh, it's just all kinds of bad. All kinds of bad. And the thing is with Gramble, right? Is... Yeah. So I'm just thinking... I'm just thinking in my head uh, on how, on the sequencing here. So we attach the DCE. Cynthia, now. Oh, Sudorudo could really screw them up. That could really help, actually. So, fingers crossed um, we can survive to win this game and actually play the Sudorudo because that could really throw a bit of a wrench into their, you know, their system. So, yeah, we're just going to sit here. One, hope they don't have a Guzma and Switch, which they probably can get. Let's be real. Um... But if they don't care of this Kangaskhan and they do care of the active Victini or any any other Pokemon on the bench bar the Kangaskhan, then um, we could bench that Sudowoodo and really kind of force them to discard one of the Orangurus or the Makargos, which would be kind of rough, uh, in my opinion. So, But let's be real. They're probably grabbing a Guzma and they're probably going to grab a Switch afterwards, considering they can just do that. Um, or not... 
Or they're going to grab a Guzma and a Granville, which will do the same thing, but they'll have to thin the last card in their hand to be able to get the KO. So, um, considering the play they're making now, I'm assuming they're getting what they want. So, let's just uh, see here. So, that Ultra Balling. Okay, so they're going to get the... Yeah, okay. They're going to get the grab. All right. So they want to they obviously want to follow up on their attack next turn. Um, and I do think they've got the win, unfortunately. Clearly, you know, just because we was unable to keep up. There's just turns where we really, in the early game, we really, there was potential for us to get some KOs, but we just didn't, um, which is a bit rough. Let's throw the pseudo and let's just see what they do with that in play. Let's just see what they do. Um, I want to see what exactly they discard because they're not going to get this, they're not going to discard the Gramble. I'm assuming they're going to discard an Oranguru because they only need one, I believe. Um, discarding the Makargo is a bit risky. I think the Makargo is more important because the Makargo can guarantee. Wow, they got rid of the Makargo. Wow. Okay. Um, I'm actually I'm actually going to accelerate to a Malamar again, just in case. Uh, but the Makargo is is more important because the thing is with Oranguru is if you use Oranguru to instruct, you're playing a very big risky game there. Because you're instructing into cards that might actually make your hand uh, unthinnable, effectively, or, or too clunky. Anyway, let's see if we can pull the KO on this Gramble. Do we get it? Two heads, we need three. No. So, um, come on. Come on. Heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. Heart of the cards. Oh, no. Oh, that just feels so bad. Oh, that feels rough. That feels rough. Ah, unfortunate. To say the very least. <laughs> oh, God. Kangaskhan is just all over the place. This card, though, you know what? It's not, not good. It's not good at all. But I remember... Yeah, let's give him the heart. And the well played. Um, and, of course, you have a good deck, even though I hate Gramble. Um, yeah, this was like the first card I actually really enjoyed playing with uh, a long time ago. When I was playing with uh, some other people. And uh, I was sitting there going, hey... This card is awesome. It can just kill everything. And then you go into the, like, as you get, you start to understand the game more and you start to understand the meta. And then you're like, this card is terrible. <laughs> it just goes from great to, ah, not that great. Um, but is there, like, for, let's say when you started playing the Pokemon trading card game, is there that one card that you just played a ton that you thought was amazing but just turned out to be somewhat either decent or not good at all? But just at that moment, you're like, this card is the best card in the game. Um, I'd love to hear, I'd love to hear, you know, what card you actually played that was that card. Anyway, this is the list. Um, would I recommend it? Probably not, if you're trying to win. If you're trying to have some fun and you want to have those weird moments where you're sitting there going, do I or don't I, you know, reflip, and you just want to have a bit of a laugh, then yeah, go and play this. This is a fun deck nonetheless. It works pretty well against GX decks. Against Gramble, it's awful, <laughs> obviously. Um, but yeah, just give it a shot. I mean, to be fair, I could be really um, not giving it what it deserves. But you saw it all there in its glory. Sometimes it just thrashes things and other times it just gets thrashed. So kind of an on and off deck. Nonetheless, it is fun to play. Uh, do, as I said, make it yourself and try it out. Let me know. But, of course, other than that, do leave a like on this video if you did enjoy it. And, of course, do subscribe for more. Um, and I do hope you enjoyed the rest of your week. Tomorrow's Friday. Aha, I'm looking forward to it. Anyway, do take care and peace.